This person says, I've heard that love rules and love conquers all, including fear. <laughs> when I live in fear, I don't seem to recognise this. Is this because I can't see love when I live in fear? Or am I, or am I just so desensitised to love and so invested in fear? What will it be like when love rules? Mm. Well, again, there's a lot of sections to this question, so mm -hmm. let's go through them. Firstly, the whole love rules and love conquers fear. There are slogans which a person will never feel until they actually let go of their fear from a, as an emotional experience. So the average person, when they consider love, they, don't, they, they actually feel quite a lot of fear when they feel about love even. Yeah. And that's because the fear itself is dictating how they interpret love to be. And quite frequently, that's why we enter codependent addictions and then call them love. Mm -hmm. So while true love does conquer fear, the reality is you must first conquer fear before you can feel it. And that's why true love conquers fear. I see. And for the majority of people, they don't go through their fear. And so they try to create a fictitious place where they believe themselves to be in pure love, but they are carrying around large amounts of fear. And obviously, while you're doing that, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to be sensitive to love. And it's also going to be very difficult for you to even feel it, let alone um, understand it. Mm -hmm. And you, to understand love, you must feel it. And to understand true love, you must feel true love. It, to, for, for most people, they understand what I would classify as codependent addictions, and they call that love. And unfortunately, that's where most people's relationships on this earth are. They are in codependent addiction with each other. They call it true love, especially when most of their codependent addictions are met by the other person. Yeah. If very few of their codependent addictions are met by the other person, then they don't call it true love so much. They just say, you know, they call it an affair or some other kind of, um, you know, some other kind of name or term that we give to love, quotation marks, being involved in our relationships. Mm -hmm. So, so I feel firstly we need to give up the slogans. We need to say to ourselves, well, even if love does conquer all fear and even if love is a beautiful thing, I don't really feel it. And so there must be a reason why I don't really feel it and, and I need to be honest with myself that I don't actually feel it. In fact, you need to be honest with yourself about any emotion before you can actually feel the reasons why you feel the way you do. Yeah. And it's no good trying to convince yourself that you love or you're loving while at the same time in denial of most of your emotions because in the end you're not loving. It's quite simple. It's, it's so it's impossible to actually be loving if we're in denial of so many emotions. Of course. Of course it's yeah. impossible. That's why the majority of people from this earth enter the first sphere of the spirit world when they pass. And the first sphere is six spheres separated from natural love even. Mm -hmm. So... There's so much separation between what God defines as the perfect human love and the love that we have on the earth. There's six spheres of separation, in fact, between those two locations. So we've got to understand that what we see love to be on earth is completely distorted, mm -hmm. completely out of harmony with the way God intended us to naturally live even. And this is without God's love. And the difference between the human love and God's love is, is like, again, it's like inf comparing infinity with a very small, finite thing. So it's like comparing, if you like, the size of the earth with the size of the sun in terms of the differences between the types of love as well. And the majority of people haven't even perfected the first type of love. That's the love re relating to hum humanity or human, the love that comes in from inside of you out to, to somebody outside of you. And because we haven't perfected that kind of love, in fact, we're nowhere near perfection of that kind of love, and we have a lot of misunderstandings too about what God's love would be. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that needs to be said in answer to the question. Then I think we should remind the, the viewers of what the next part of her question was, so where yeah. she asked the first question.
question, if you like. So, yeah, <clears throat> the first question was, when I live in fear, I don't seem to recognise that love rules or love conquers all. And that's very true. When she lives in fear, she can't recognise love at all. Yep. You can't. And that's the truth. It's, it's just impossible. Sorry, you just yep. need to have a pause. Um, so the next part, and really the question, which is probably what I should have said earlier, um, she asks, is, so when I live in fear, I don't seem to recognise that love rules. Is this because I can't see love when I live in fear? Yes. Or am I just so desensitised to love and so invested in fear? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an or. No. It's yes, you're all of those things. Yeah. You, you are desensitised to love completely and we are desensitised to love because on this earth what we view as love is just codependent addiction. Mm -hmm. And what is real love we can't recognise at all. So, yes, you're completely desensitised to love. But also we have the other problem and that is that we are so, you know, locked into fear. Fear can't see truth. Fear can't see pretty much anything other than fear generally. What, unless you feel it and release it, you're never going to see either the truth about love or the truth about anything else. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you know, fear has a large bearing on what we see or examine love to be, what mm -hmm. we feel love is. We're going to think that anybody who allays our fear, who makes our fear go away or reduces our fear, loves us. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to think. And that's not love at all. And in fact, that's why the majority of people on earth don't feel loved by God, because God does not make your fear go away. God does not reduce your fear. God doesn't need to, because God knows that if you accepted God's truth, you would automatically be less afraid. Yeah. So God's created the universe through which we can be less afraid as long as we accept more truth. Mm -hmm. That's the proviso. We must accept more truth to be less afraid. Um, we've just gone in the darkness because one of our lights have blown, so <laughs> we'll just fix that up. Um, sorry about the darkness. We just tried to fix that. That uh, was a light just going off at the time. <laughs> but uh, to recap, we were just talking about how codependent addictions cause us to believe that love is codependent addictions. And this is the problem that we face on earth is that we're constantly feeling that when somebody meets our addictions, so for example, if we feel afraid and somebody makes us feel safe, we automatically believe that that person loves us. Mm. And God doesn't do things like that. And as I discussed uh, just before the power went, <laughs> the power went, um, you know, God doesn't make our fear go away because God knows that it, it, we have fear because we're not accepting the truth. Once we accept all the truth, of, and particularly all of God's truth, we will have no fear and therefore we, we don't need to have anybody make our fear go away. And so that's the beautiful thing about God is that if, if we do everything as God's way, in the end the fear will disappear and we'll also be able to recognise real love. Mm. So that, that's the problem. The majority of us are completely desensitised to love because we are only sensitive to someone meeting our addictions, which we call love. And the majority of us have a huge amount of fear, so we're desensitised to truth. We want the false things to be true, and that's what fear is. That's what causes our fear, in fact. Mm -hmm. So because we want the false things to be true, we're unwilling to accept the truth. And the sad part of that is that the truth will actually help our fear go away as long as we feel it. In other words, the truth will expose the feeling or emotion of fear within us and if we are sensitive enough to allow the feeling of that emotion, the fear will dissipate. And as the fear dissipates, we will come to feel the truth. Mm -hmm. So we will actually feel the truth as an emotion, not, not as an intellectual thought. So codependence can make us feel like our fear has gone away, but it's just suppressed. Whereas yes. when we receive <clears throat> God's truth, it exposes our fear. We have the opportunity to release it and it's gone, then the fear is gone forever. Gone forever, yes. Yep. Gone forever out of the soul. And there's very few circumstances in the future where that may return, and, and very unusual circumstances, mm -hmm. of course, where it may return. But not anybody on the earth doesn't need to worry about that. If they allow themselves to process through their fear in that manner, when the truth exposed their fear, 
then they would find they would become fearless through the process. And as they release more fear, they are more open to the truth. And therefore, because the truth is a doorway to love, they're more open to seeing love and recognizing it and also allow and allowing the feeling of it. Mm -hmm. So in other words, allowing God's love to enter them and even allowing other people's love to enter them, true love to enter them, they'd now be able to recognize when even someone else loves them rather than that person being in a codependent addiction with them. So we become much more sensitive as a result. So the only reason why we're desensitised is because we're not facing the truth and we don't want to. And why wouldn't we want to? Because it confronts our fears and we don't want our fears confronted. So that's, that's the only reason why we would remain in the condition we currently are. Mm. Now, she asked the last question, part well, of the question, it, doesn't she? It sort of le- perhaps links to what you've been talking about. Um, what will it be like when love rules? Now, I must first address the presumption in or the premise in the question. Now, everybody asks me, what will it be like when? Now, the reason why these kind of questions constantly get asked Mm -hmm. is because you have yet to experience what it's like then. Mm -hmm. And so you want somebody to tell you, oh, it's going to be okay. You'll be okay. Don't worry. (laughs) You want somebody to allay a fear. Mm -hmm. You'd be far better off just feeling like I've got no idea what it's going to be like then and isn't that a bit scary than asking me the question of what is it going to be like then. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, sometimes when we tell people the truth about what things are going to be like, that gives us hope and that's what the person here is looking for. They're looking for hope. Mm -hmm. They're looking for something to hope in that gives them enough desire to want to address their fears and also want to actually start to feel God's love. Now, I feel there are many, many hundreds of things that could be mentioned to to help a person have that hope. And I'm not saying that having that hope isn't a bad thing. In Mm -hmm. fact, it is a good thing. But real faith and real trust in the things that somebody states to you will only occur once you've processed fear, once you've actually gone through the emotion. So it doesn't matter how many things I list of what it will be like once you've dealt with fear. Um, It doesn't matter how many of those things I list, you are still going to remain in fear and therefore not be able to feel anything that I'm saying to you. Mm -hmm. And it's only by going through the fear that you'll be able to feel any of the good parts about what it feels like to not have fear. Mm -hmm. And this is the problem with many of these kind of questions. These kind of questions sort of, all they do is feed the intellect, but they don't give you any confidence or or make any emotional shifts in you enough to actually have you deal with the actual emotion that's preventing you from having the good experience. Mm -hmm. And so what I would prefer to see people doing is saying, I'm petrified about what the future might be in any direction, which is probably more like the truth. And even though I'm petrified, I'm going to trust God. And I'm going to trust that, you know, if God is leading me through this process, that God will lead me through the process. And whatever the results are must be good because God is good. (laughs) And if I don't feel those things, then I need to feel that God is bad. Mm -hmm. And I need to go through my emotions about why I feel God is bad Mm -hmm. for whatever those. And there will be a whole list of emotions there as to why you feel that as well. You can sort of jump ahead with your intellect. And the problem with jumping ahead with the intellect is eventually you convince yourself that you've made emotional shifts that you have not made. Now, of course, your law of attraction, the the law of attraction will bring to you through your soul-based projections, will bring to you events demonstrating to you that you haven't actually made a change, right? But unfortunately, you might have convinced yourself that you have, and then you start blaming other people for those particular attractions. Yeah. So in other words, you say, oh, I'm all nice and loving now, so it must be all your fault that you're attacking me or all your fault that this particular thing happened to me. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Rather than going, oh, okay, this thing is still happening to me, so it's got a, I'm the centre of what's happening to me here, so therefore I've got to address something or I've got to address some kind of emotion inside of me that's causing these events to occur. And I feel that these kind of questions where people ask me what will happen when, when they have not even engaged the when 
you know, they mm-hmm. haven't they haven't tried to engage even feeling fear, and so and so the question then becomes, well, you're really getting way ahead of yourself here. Yeah. And this is one reason why in the spirit world very few people ever get told any new truth other than the next one they need to work on. Yes. Because otherwise they get so way ahead of themselves <laughs> that they can try to convince themselves that they've dealt with a whole heap of things they've never de- dealt with. Mm-hmm. And I find a lot of people on earth doing that with the, the divine truth. Mm-hmm. They're trying to convince themselves that they're way, way ahead of where they actually are. Yeah. Yeah. That all being said, obviously, once you've released fear and you've accepted God's truth, which means you've had to be humble to do so, you will start and you have a long, if you, as long as you have a longing for God's love, you will start to receive God's love. Mm-hmm. Once that occurs, you will have proof that everything will be better as long as you receive God's love. You'll have proof that feeling fear and letting go of fear is to your benefit. Yeah. And you'll have proof that everything I'm talking about with regard to your emotions is true. Until you do those things, you will not have proof. Mm-hmm. And you, if you search for intellectual proof after intellectual proof before you even go through the experience, the experiment, if you like, with your emotions, then all you're going to do is get nowhere. And this is what most even six fear spirits do. When they come and talk to us, they don't, they, they're asking me all these questions about emotions and all these different things, just like most people on earth ask. And then I say, do you want to engage the experiment? And they say, no. <laughs> What's the point? Yeah. If you don't want to engage the experiment, just be honest and say no. But there's no point in having a further discussion about emotion unless you're willing to engage emotion and understand it. Yeah. Then we can have some further discussions about emotion. <laughs> Yeah. then we can talk about what the next step is. So that's what I would encourage people who ask these kind of questions to do. Engage the process and you'll find yourself asking a lot less questions yeah. because you'll now trust God, you'll now trust the process, you'll know it's true, you'll know it works and you won't need to be convinced by somebody trying to encourage you and telling you a hundred hopeful things to make you feel like it's all going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And within this question, I mean, this person's asking, what will it be like when love rules? And I sort of feel like love already does rule the universe. Exactly. It's just that we personally elevate our avoidance of fear to such an extent that we we can't even see what love is, as you mentioned with the codependence. And we we don't recognise that every law that's governing our existence right now is based in love and is designed to help bring us to love. So what will it be like when love rules? Well, it'll be like this. When we decide to act in harmony with it, then we'll begin to change. But Yeah, the reality is, um, like you say, very important for people to understand, isn't it? That love is already ruling. Yeah. So, so it's going to be exactly like it currently is when love rules. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, the only reason why it is so painful for people on earth is because the majority of people on earth are totally in disharmony with love. Yeah. And that's why there's so much pain and suffering. And that's also why they don't even think love rules. Mm-hmm. But the reality is love rules every single event that happens to you. Yeah. Every single event that is controlled by laws that are all governed by love. So, so like to, to then assume that, that, that love doesn't rule mm-hmm. is another presumption yeah. uh, that is obviously false. Yeah. Lo- love always rules. Yeah. But, of course, you're not going to feel that when you're in opposition to love. Yeah. And when we're in codependent addiction, we're in complete opposition to love. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, we're in the pain that naturally results from our opposition to love. Yeah. And it's from our opposition to love, yeah. not from the world's. Yeah. So our personal pain is a direct result of our own personal opposition to love. We are personally in opposition to love when we feel pain. Yeah. Like, so when I'm talking pain, any emotional pain, any physical pain, any pains at all are all indicators that we're in opposition to love. We ourselves are, not the world. Mm-hmm. We are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is where most people go wrong because they blame the world externally to themselves and say, oh, love doesn't rule this world. Yes, love does. Love completely rules this world. It's just that you're in so much opposition to it, and unfortunately so are billions yes, of others, of others. Yeah. That, that, that we are getting the complete results of our own opposition to love. Mm-hmm. Which, And all the laws are trying to correct us still. Yeah. All the truth is still available to us, but we're just in complete opposition to it. Yeah. And we've got to remove the opposition. 
And this is what I feel most people don't do. They don't remove the opposition in t- inside of themselves towards love. Mm-hmm. And they don't re- and all the opposition comes from a lack of understanding of truth, and that comes from fears yeah. and other feelings generally, but it also comes from things like using our will to oppose love, like mm-hmm. purposefully using our will to oppose real love, purposefully using our will to feed our codependent addictions. Of course, when we do all of those things, we're not going to think love rules because the reality is in our world, we are attempting to rule rather than love and our condition is so far out of harmony with love that there's going to be so much pain that's attracted to our life as a result. Yeah. That's why it feels to us like love doesn't rule. Yeah. But it's all of our own creation and we bear the direct responsibility for that. Yes, yeah. So there's a lot of misunderstandings and premises in these kind of questions that, that while I can answer the questions more directly, the whole premise of the question is usually so flawed that um, there's no much point answering yeah. the question directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good day.